table and a graph um, so we can graph, we can calculate some of these. Okay. As you can see, I've set up a table and a graph so that we can calculate these values and graph them. Okay. But first, let's look at uh, the important information in this situation is that the price of the house doubles over 10 years and they bought the house in 1960 for $10,000, okay? That's the main part. We, we need two pieces of information. We need to know what our starting value is and what we're multiplying by each time, okay? So starting with that, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off, okay? In 1960, they, they bought the house for $10,000. Okay, uh, so that was the value in 1960. In 1970, by this point, the house had doubled in, in value. So 10,000 times two, or 20,000. Okay, 1980, it had doubled again. So 10,000 times two, Instead of say times two times two, just let's say two squared. Okay, we're gonna square that, and so now it's uh, valued at forty thousand dollars. Okay, nineteen ninety. Now it is doubled again, so ten thousand. Uh, now we're we're doing two to the third power. We're cubing that two, so we get eighty thousand dollars. Okay, and 2,000, it is 2 to the 4th power, which gives us $160,000. And in 2010, it is 2 to the 5th power, or $320,000. Okay. These are closer to today's prices, okay? Um, so it kind of makes sense, you know, if we go out one more time to 2020, um, it would be 640000 which makes sense with what we know about um, housing values today. Our first two uh, process entries there don't exactly follow the same format as the rest of them. We can easily fix that. Our 1970 would be two to the first power. And for our initial one, our starting value is two to the zero power, okay? Because that's gonna be our wires that, that we're about to graph here in just a moment, okay? So I'm gonna move this over, and we're gonna graph, um, I don't need all of that big. As you can see, my x-axis is a decade since 1960. My y-axis is the house value in thousands, and I've Labeled every other line is fifty thousand um, dollars, just in increments of fifty thousand dollars. It's easier to see them that way. Um, if I tried to label every line, it wouldn't be very easy to read. All right, and we really don't need. I'm going to move it this way so we can still see our decades. And we converted our years to decades because that's easier for us to put in as exponents than it is for us to put the years. So. That's where we're starting with that. Okay, in um, 1960, our uh, our house value was about ten thousand dollars. It was about here, ish. Okay, these are not going to be pretty points. We're kind of estimating where the points fall on our graph, but we're looking for the general shape. And uh, 1970, we're at twenty thousand dollars. So kind of here. And uh, 1980, we're at $40,000. And in 1990, we're at $80,000. So let's see, there's 75, 80 is gonna be kind of here. And then in 2000, we're at 160. So here's 150, 160 is kind of here-ish. 
And in uh, 2010, it's up to 320,000. So 320, it's about right there. Okay. We could graph this. We can just connect our points. And when we do that, we could see that shape of an exponential function. Then. Okay. There's a couple of bits of information we can get from this. We can look at our domain and range. We can use the table or the graph to make predictions about values. We can also use the table to actually figure out an equation that we can use. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see both of them at the same time. I mentioned domain and range. Let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. Domain, remember, is your x values. So when we talk about domain, it's going to be... In this case, we start at zero, um, but we have no indication that the house stops losing value. So it's just going to continue to go up from zero. So x is equal less than, excuse me, x is greater than or equal to zero. Range, that's our y values. So for our range, again, our range starts at $10,000. There's no indication that this house stops losing value um, or stops gaining value. So our Y value is going to just kind of keep going. It's going to start at $10,000 but keep going from there. So Y is greater than or equal to $10,000. Okay. We can use... Uh, Again, I guess we use our table and our graph to make a prediction. So if we wanted to estimate um, the value of the house in 2005, estimate the house value in 2005. Well, 2005 is here. It's kind of halfway between 2000 and 2010. Um, so if we wanted to kind of estimate this value here based on these two, you can estimate anywhere, anything that kind of makes sense. So if you wanted to kind of go halfway between them and say 240,000, uh, that would be a, a reasonable estimate. Um, if you wanted to kind of back off that a little bit, you could do that. Um, anything that's reasonable based on what you're given in the table. You can explain why you think that's a reasonable estimate and it's backed up by what you have on your table, then it's a reasonable estimate. On the graph, if we kind of looked at the graph, our um, that's kind of where 4.5 hits our graph, which kind of puts it just below 225,000, maybe about 220,000. Which again, 220 would be a reasonable estimate on our table. So we can estimate that maybe it's about 220,000. Oh, this is not the actual value. This is just an estimate based on what we what we can see. Okay. Now remember, I said we could write our, our equation uh, based off of what we have in our process column. So we've kind of already done that, and really all we have to do is just throw some variables in there. So instead of 2 to a specific number, we're just going to say 2 to the x power. This y equals, okay? So our equation is 10,000 times 2 to the x power, okay? If we um, wanted to find the actual value, okay? All we would have to do is 2005 is halfway between four and five, so it's four and a half. So if we did uh, y equals 10,000 times two to the 4.5 power, decimal there, okay, 10,000 times 2 to the 4.5 power, we're going to get $226,274.17. Okay? Now, 
Um, when we're talking housing values, we really don't need the pennies. We're going to round to the nearest dollar on this. And so we're going to put it in here as $226,274. And we get 10,000 times 2 to the 4.5 power. Okay, easy enough? All right. Um, when we are talking about these exponential functions, now if you're in my class, we talked about exponential function key features yesterday. Okay, or that was the assignment. Yes, it was it's the assignment just before this one. Okay. And exponential key features, if you remember, your exponents or exponential functions are written out as a times b to the x power. Okay. This a is our initial value. That's our starting value, our y-intercept. No matter what the situation is, that A value is always going to be your starting value. The A is never going to be zero. Okay? If A is zero, then the whole thing is, is just constantly zero. So A is never zero. Okay? The B value, in this instance, because we're talking about growth functions today, this is our growth factor. Um, all right, our growth factor. And with our growth factor, the B can never be zero. Again, anytime you're multiplying by zero, your entire equation is going to be zero. So it will never be zero. And if it's a growth factor, B has to be greater than one. It's never going to be one. It could be really close to one, but it has to be larger than one. Okay. So in this case, the two is our growth factor. And it's a two because we're doubling each time. And this 10,000 is our start value. And as you can see on our table, it's also our, or excuse me, as you can see on our graph, it is also our y-intercept right here. Okay? Let's look at one more value on our table. If I were to come up here and say, I want to know the value of the house um, say two and a half decades after it was purchased. So two and a half decades after it's purchased, if I do 10,000 times two to the 2.5, okay? Well, this time, 10,000 times two to the 2.5, I'm going to get 56,000 $568.54. Okay. Again, I'm going to round it to the nearest whole dollar, so $56,569. Okay. And you know, going backwards two and a half decades after 1960, it's going to be 1985. Okay. If I multiply 2.5 times 10, I'll get 25. Add that to 1960 and work 1985. Okay? Guys, that's our exponential growth functions. Um, the next lesson is the exponential decay functions. And those are going to be very similar to this, except our B value is not going to be greater than 1. Okay? You have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.